Who here wants to get into Fang? I think for software engineers especially, Fang is like it's like not just places to work, but it's also an indication that you're recognized by your skills are recognized. It's achieved a certain level among the other great software engineers. So it means more than just good salary and things like that. It means recognition of your skills, I think. But of course, it's highly competitive. So this article is interesting. 99th of 99% of engineers never get into FANG, and here's why. The blunt, uncomfortable, career-changing truth no one told you until now. I guess number one reason, even before reading this, is that it's just highly competitive, right? You're just dealing with, you're just competing against all these other highly intelligent, highly ex uh, experienced engineers for limited positions and that's difficult and then of course there's the lock two and so on and so forth it's an article written by mark henry on medium javascript in plain english let's have a read at this and for those of you that don't know me my name is pascal i'm studying software engineering masters and daily we read articles like this related to software engineering so if that interests you make sure to like and subscribe let me start with a story I've seen play out more times than I can count. A brilliant engineer, we'll call him Dan, spends eight months grinding lead code every night. Ooh, I've thought about doing this, just six months grind with lead code so that you are, so that I am more interview ready because right now I don't feel really like, like I don't feel confident. I don't feel like throw me any questions out. I can at least attempt it to a good degree. I don't feel that. So yeah. But anyways, he memorizes 200 plus problems. He rewatches system design videos like their comfort shows. Yeah, I think to prepare interviews, famous, you know, popular things to do is grind lead code and learn system design. He prints out cheat sheets, flashcards, even writes a script that auto labels LC questions by pattern. Then he walks into his Fang interview. 30 minutes in, he's sweating, stuck, confused why the problem isn't matching the 14 variants he practiced. He leaves the call and tells me with a straight face, they didn't ask anything I prepared for. Of course they didn't. Dan isn't dumb. He's actually pretty good, but he made the same mistake 99% of engineers make. And that mistake is exactly why so few ever breaks into Fang. Let's talk about it. Number one, lead code isn't the problem. Your relationship with it is. There's this myth that Fang interviews are IQ contests disguised as binary tree questions. Not true. Fang interviews measure how you think, not how well you can regurgitate patterns. Most engineers treat lead code like a magic key. If I solve enough, they will let me in. No, you will just become very fast at solving medium questions with two pointer solutions. Fang cares about clarity of communication, structured problem solving, your ability to stay calm under ambiguity, whether you can reason, not guess. Here's the reality. If you practice Nico to memorize problems, you'll lose. If you practice it to master thinking, you'll win. The 1% don't brute force lead code. They treat it like a gym for analytic muscles. I think what's good to do is do a bit of both. It sh you should be able to memorize the solutions, you should be able to regurgitate solutions, but at the same time, you should be able to explain, you know, clarity of communication, explain what you're thinking. So then you're not just memorizing, but you can explain your logic of how you solve it, even if you have memorized it. Yeah, the, so there are two parts to it. One is the lead code itself, and the other one is the communication part. Of course, they are both important. Number two, most engineers don't understand what Fang actually wants. People say Fang is hard to get into. Sure, but what's actually hard is meeting their expectations. Fang wants engineers who can break down nebulous problems without panicking, design systems that won't collapse when 10 million users show up, write clean, reliable code without hand-holding, think in trade-offs, not absolutes, debug like a detective, not a gambler. But what do most engineers do? They obsess over learning the fanciest new framework of the week. 
uh, they jump from tutorial to tutorial, they grind lead code like they're farming XP, all while ignoring the real game. Fang hires engineers who can reduce chaos, not create more of it. And how do you do this? I guess you do this by learning system design and practicing explaining your thoughts out loud. And I guess with exper uh, I guess experience too is an important important thing here. Number three, the portfolio problem no one talks about. I'll be blunt. Most engineer portfolio portfolios are glorified to-do list apps. You know exactly what I'm talking about. A weather app, a note-taking app, a budget tracker, some half-finished clone of Spotify. Fang doesn't care about these. They don't show they don't show death. You they don't show ownership. They don't show technical maturity. What actually stands out? Real world projects, freelance, volunteer, internal internal tools, contributions to meaningful open source repos, a system you designed from scratch with clear trade-offs. Something painful, complex, and ugly because that's real engineering. If you want fang level interviews, build fang level problems, not another to-do app. Hmm, yeah. And there's always the question of what open source should I contribute to? What real world project should I work on? What language and so on? Yeah, and I think I think that's a difficult question that I've asked. And I think the answer is I should just get started. I am working on a project, but right now I haven't been able to prioritize that. And I think that's also a difficult part because while grinding lead code, while practicing system design, and also at the same time working on, you know, complex projects like this, it's difficult to find, find time. Most engineers are terrible at selling themselves. Harsh but true. Your resume is not a memoir. Stop telling me you contributed to the front-end team or helped with API migrations. No one hires you for helping. They hire, for Im hire you for impact. Use this formula. Problem, action, result, evidence. Example, refactored legacy payment service, reducing transaction failures from 3.1% to 0.2% and saving around 900,000 annually. See, this shows competence. And guess what? Fang recruiters live for competence. Having read this, this applies to not just Fang, of course, but in all job applications, your CV should be formatted like this. Interview panic, the silent career killer. Fang interviews are high pressure, but most engineers prepare in isolation. They grind alone. They solve problems in silence. Then the interview comes. They freeze. They talk like robots. Their brain goes blank. Why? Because they practiced like programmers, not interviewees. Here's how the 1% actually prepare. Mock interviews with real humans, talking thought through solutions out loud, even when coding alone, recording themselves explaining concepts, getting uncomfortable with being uncomfortable, building pattern recognition by solving fewer problems but deeper. Interviewing is a skill and most engineers never train it. I definitely think I am not the best at interviews but I've been getting better over time just because I've been having a lot of it. That's why I think even if you feel like you're not going to get the job, you don't really match the descriptions and so on and so forth, it's still worthwhile going to the interview and trying because in any case, it's a good experience and you'll learn a lot from it. And being able to interview is a really good skill. They don't play the long game. Fang hire isn't a lottery, it's a process, and most engineers want a shortcut. They try for three months, fail, and quit. But I've seen this cycle repeatedly. The engineers who get into Fang are the ones who stick with it for 12 to 24 months. They iterate, they adopt, they learn from every rejection. They treat the journey like leveling up, not losing. losing. Some long game thinkers win. There's uh, this saying called, uh, you either win or you learn. So even if you take the L, that means you're learning. Number seven, the technical depth problems. Many engineers know 20 tools, but can't explain how a hash map works. They can build a UI, but can't reason about memory. They can follow a tutorial, but can't explain the architecture is, in structured, is structured that way. Fang engineers 
are expected to know how the machine works, at least at a co conceptual level. If you want to stand out, get deep in st data structures and algorithms, conceptually not as flashcards, system design fundamentals, distributed systems basics, concurrency and parallelism, databases and indexing, caching and performance tuning. You don't need a PhD level, ma PhD level mastery. You need to, but you need to show that you think like someone who cares about correctness, efficiency, and architecture. Number eight, their network is basically no one. Here's the fun fact. Most engineers apply into the void. They send resumes into application tracking black holes and hope for mercy. The 1% do something else. They talk to current engineers, hiring managers, alumni from their school or boot camp, people at meetups, co-workers who previously worked at FANG. They get referrals. They learn how interviews at specific companies feel. They understand expectations. And funny enough, they get interviews. I think this is so true and I am someone who's always underestimated this but in my cohort for example there are two of us who got the internships first first one was me who I got my internship because actually both of us we uh, both got the internship because we talked to someone at the job what is it called job forum that we had at school and there was surprisingly i didn't expect much out of it but yeah both of us were the first ones to get internships because of that so why don't 99 percent get into fang because most engineers want the outcome but they don't train for the reality fang isn't looking for perfect coders they're looking for confidence problem servers engineers who think clearly people who can communicate well technical maturity long-term consistency most engineers don't like intelligence they lack right approach. If you want to become the 1%, here's what actually works. 1. Practice lead code for thinking, not memorization. 2. Build one impressive, deeply technical portfolio project. Learn. Number 3. Learn to speak about your work like a professional, not a student. 4. Run mock interviews weekly. 5. Study fundamentals, not trends. 6. Play the long game, 12 to 24 months is minimum. 7. Build a network of actual humans. 8. Document your progress improve intentionally do this consistently and you won't just get better you will become the kind of engineer fang fires fights to hire agree disagree want to fight me in the comments drop your thoughts below share this with a de developer friend save it save it so you can roast yourself later when step four step number four finally clicks and if you're on the fang journey right now keep going you're closer than you think published in javascript in plain english this is a in really interesting article and I think if you are trying for FANG or not, it's always a good reminder because if you do this, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're trying for FANG or not, you just be a lot more hireable. Yeah, so that was cool. Hope you enjoyed this article. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.